Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to explore the idea of measuring distance in space. But specifically, not just measuring distance here in our own solar system, but actually much much farther away. So I wanted to actually show you how we measure distances that are way 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 farther than just our own solar system, and we're going to use uh, brilliant.org to help us understand the concepts. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So I was actually going through Brilliant.org and uh, looking at their astronomy uh, classes and there's actually a really, really cool topic right here known as Sizing the Universe that has uh, several questions and several quizzes on basically the idea of measuring distances in, um, in our universe and how we use different types of measurements and measurement devices, measurement techniques to try to figure out how to essentially measure a distance from our own Earth to various objects out there in the universe. And specifically here, we're really referring to more intergalactic scales or even uh, the scales when it comes to our own galaxy. And so, for example, if we actually wanted to measure distance uh, from our own Earth to this supernova right here, we would have to rely on several interesting um, statistical techniques. And let's actually start with um, something a little bit closer to Earth. Let's start with the idea of um, parallax and astronomical unit. So first of all, what is an astronomical unit? Well, that's the distance from our Sun to Earth. So this right here is known as AU. And so as you can see here, our Earth orbits the Sun and because of this, it actually goes from, let's say, this point to this point um, every six months. So basically, it takes a year to orbit, but we, we appear in different um, parts of our orbit throughout the time. And if we were to draw a line right here, it would actually form a basis of a triangle. And this triangle can be used for something really cool. We can actually use this for what's known as a trigonometric parallax. And here, imagine that this is the Sun and this is Earth. If we build a triangle like this, we can then use trigonometry to try to calculate a distant, distance to a certain object right there. And so right here, uh, Brilliant.org actually has a very interesting um, visualization of this technique that shows you how we can potentially measure the distance to a star far, far away. In other words, if we were to measure the angle right here, and we already know the astronomical unit, uh, so this distance and this distance is known to us, we can then use simple trigonometry to estimate the distance to this star right here. Now, without going into detail, which you can definitely explore by yourself using this website, um, the idea here is actually really simple. And so knowing the angle and knowing this, we can basically use trigonometry to estimate the distance up to about a thousand parsec or about um, close to about 3,500 light years away from us. Which means that, um, at least when it comes to galactic scale, everything around this little area here can be estimated using uh, this type of a technique, this parallax technique. But everything beyond that is going to be very difficult, mostly because things just really, really become hard to measure in terms of the actual degrees. So finding this angle for an object that's much, much farther away is going to be difficult. So this is where we have to rely on another technique that's also described here. And this is something we refer to as a standard candle or a galactic candle or a space candle. It has many different names. And the idea is actually pretty simple. If you know the luminosity of an object and you put this object farther away, you can then use uh, the relationship between distance and luminosity, which has an inverse square um, relationship, to estimate the distance of this candle. So if, for example, this is like luminosity of one, and we put it at a certain distance, and now luminosity has increased by a certain amount, I can then estimate the distance um, using this inverse uh, square law. So basically, at a distance of one meter, the intensity is four, at two meters, it's one, and at three meters, it becomes 0.44. And so this implies that, that if we can actually find an object whose luminosity we know very, very well, we can then estimate the distance from our own sun right there to uh, basically that object using this particular technique. 
Now, which objects can we actually use for this? Well, the three most common ones are two types of variable stars and one type of a supernova. Let's start with the actual, let's start with the supernova. So if I were to type supernova here, uh, it appears right here. This is a type 1a supernova, basically in an explosion of a white dwarf. And for the most part, most of these uh, supernova, specifically the type 1a supernova, will always occur in similar conditions, and they will usually have relatively similar luminosity. So when scientists detect a type 1a supernova, they know what its maximum um, luminosity is going to be. And they also know how long it's going to last, so using this relationship between uh, the actual length of a supernova and its maximum magnitude, they can then uh, use the inverse uh, relationship between magnitude and distance to estimate how far away this actually happens. And if this happened in another galaxy, they can then kind of use this to estimate the distance to this specific galaxy. Now, they'll need uh, more than one usually to try to get more accurate results, but for the most part, um, type 1a supernova uh, are actually pretty accurate and pretty good at predicting the distances when it comes to um, measuring objects in space. And so here, uh, there's actually a whole um, section on type 1a supernova that you can explore um, by yourself. And it even tells you on how to calculate these and even gives you a few examples and a few quiz-like questions where you can try it yourself. Um, now, we also use two more types of stars. One of them is called the um, Cepheid variable. This is a star that basically goes up and down in terms of its magnitude and has a very specific period to luminosity ratio um, that can actually be estimated uh, using something like this. So we can estimate the magnitude and the period. And this seems to actually have a relationship. As a matter of fact, there is a direct correlation between the total luminosity of a Cepheid variable and the period um, of its luminosity change that can be expressed in this graph right here. So if we actually find a Cepheid variable in the galaxy far, far away, and we calculate the period that uh, its luminosity changes, so we basically take a look at this, and let's say we calculate it as 5.4 days. We can then take a look at the total magnitude we see and compare it to total magnitude as we know um, of in our own galaxy and estimate the distance that way as well. Same can be used with another uh, type of variable star known as RR Lyra. Now, all of these are actually in our own galaxy, and this is how we know um, their actual phases and their maximum magnitudes very, very well. So these types of variables are often used in estimating distances in galactic terms, but also uh, when we're looking at objects in far away uh, parts of our own galaxy. So in other words, by looking at the changes in luminosity, we can then estimate the actual distance to that particular star and obviously that galaxy where the star is, might be located. Now, when it comes to farther distances, when it comes to like really, really far away galaxies, we can also use the so-called Hubble law. And Hubble's law and also the idea of how we measure distances uh, using Hubble law can also be explored on Brilliant.org website right here. And you can find out more about specific measurements we use. But the idea is actually really simple. The idea is that we know that uh, as we move away from our own Earth, as we move farther and farther and farther into the depth of the universe, um, the objects from us are actually moving away faster and faster. And at some point, if we move away really, really, really far away from our own galaxy, and we'll realize that the objects here are actually uh, moving away from us at relatively high speeds, and they're still they still have similar objects like supernova and um, RR Lyrae and Cepheid variables that um, whose magnitude and whose, whose colors um, and whose spectra we actually know very well. And so if we look at the spectrum of a certain star that is moving away from us really, really fast, we can use uh, the redshift um, calculations to try to estimate the distance to them. So. You know, it, if it's sort of on the edge of the universe and it's moving away really fast from us, it will be so redshifted that it will practically be invisible in, visible, in an actual visible spectrum. Uh, but um, using the redshift analysis, we can try to estimate how far away this object actually is from us. 
And so this so-called Doppler shift um, can actually be used very effectively to calculate distances in farther reaches of space. Well, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. And this actual lesson on um, Berlin.org website is exceptionally good at explaining this in, in even more detail with a lot more math than I actually wanted to use in this video. So do check it out and uh, thank you so much Berlin.org for being the official sponsor of this channel. And also thank you so much for actually creating all of this content uh, that you can check out yourself by going to Berlin.org and looking at a variety of topics that they actually have here, including math, science, and even computer science that's being developed as I speak right now. There's a few lessons that are coming soon and I can't wait to try them out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you in the next video, space out, and as always, bye bye.